Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this lecture video, we will be discussing consolidated financial statements subsequent to date of acquisition. This will be the continuation of the discussion on consolidated financial statements at date of acquisition. So some of the concepts discussed in that lecture video will be reapply here in this lecture video. So I suggest that you rewatch that lecture video prior to watching this lecture video. Alright? Para hindi tayo ma-overwhelm sa mga concepts. Okay? So, let's start, no? Okay? So, papadaliin natin ang pagkakaintindi natin dito sa CONSO SS uh, subsequent to date of acquisition. So, let's start our discussion by discussing the concept of consolidation. Ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin pag sinabi natin consolidation? Consolidation means the process of combining the financial accounts of a parent and subsidiaries as if they were one economic entity. Now, sa pananaw kasi ng batas, ganito yon. Yung parent company, isang kumpanya yan. Yung subsidiary, isang kumpanya din. Okay? Pero, pagdating sa annual financial reporting natin, nire-require si parent at si subsidiary na mag-combine as one at gagawa ng tinatawag nating consolidated financial statements. Okay? So, kasi sa mata ng accounting standards, pag meron kang parent and subsidiary relationship, as if one company lang kayo. Ganon ang nangyayari. That's why there is a need to consolidate those accounts. Okay? Nakuha. So, consolidation simply means combining accounts. Next. In the process of consolidation, we must eliminate the effects of the transactions between parent and subsidiary. Ang tawag natin sa transaction between parent and subsidiary ay intercompany transactions. Pag gagawa tayo ng consolidated FS, dapat malim, ma-eliminate muna natin ang mga intercompany transactions nilang dalawa. Okay? Kasi ang ipapalabas natin sa consolidated FS ay effects ng transactions with third parties lang. Yun lang. Wala dapat makikitang intercompany transactions. Okay? So, that's the concept of consolidation. Next. Kailan ba dapat tayo magsimula, mag-consolidate? Consolidation will begin from the date the investor obtains control of the investee. So, ang day one ng consolidation period natin ay yung date of acquisition of control. At ito ay magtatapos pag nawalan ng control si investor kay investee. Paano nga ba ulit ay nagkakaroon ng control? If we acquire more than 50% ownership on voting stocks. Kaya na naman nawawala yung control kapag bumaba sa 51% ang ownership percentage natin sa voting stocks. Okay? Ang tawag doon, the consolidation na. Alright? I-discuss natin yon sa separate lecture video. So, dito, consolidation muna tayo. Right? Next. Consolidated balances to be computed. Ano ba yung mga usual na tinatanong when it comes to consolidated financial statements? Ayan. So, makikita nyo dito yung mga pwedeng itanong sa inyo. At tutulungan ko kayo kung paano ko computein ang mga consolidated balances nila. So, pwede tayong matanong ng consolidated net income attributable to the group, parent, and non-controlling interest. Pwede rin tayong matanong ng consolidated retained earnings balance. Pwede rin tayong matanong ng non-controlling interest in the net assets of subsidiary or NCNAS. Ayan. So, nilagay ko rin dito yung mga abbreviations para ma-familiarize kayo sa mga gagamitin nating abbreviations dahil sa haba ng mga 
accounts na ito. Okay? So, yan ha. Pag-consonant income, CNI. Pag-consonant income, attributable to the parent, TNIP tayo. Pag-consonant income, attributable to the non-controlling interest, CNI, NCI, or NCMIS. Pag sinabi nating NCMIS, non-controlling interest in the net income of subsidiary. Okay? Ayan. So, usually, dyan iikot yung mga tanong. Tapos, may, may mga certain instances din na pwede kang matanong ng tinatawag nating other consolidated balances. Ayan, medyo marami sila. Consolidated inventory, consolidated PPEs, consolidated assets, liabilities, contributed capital, and shareholders' equity. Sa mga susunod na slides, ipapakita ko muna sa inyo yung computations na itong first three consolidated balances natin. Tapos, magsasagot tayo ng problems. And, after the problem, doon ko ibibigay sa inyo yung formula for the other consolidated balances. Para full pack yung lecture natin for today. Ayos ba yun, guys? Okay. Sige. So, let's start with the computation of consolidated net income. Ayan. So, makikita nyo, meron tayong tatlong columns for the group, for the parent, and non-controlling interest. So, ang atake natin dito, guys, uunahin natin yung group muna. Then, pag natapos na yung group, doon tayo papunta kay parent at NCI. Ayos? Para masundan natin. No? Okay. Let's start. How do we compute consolidated net income? Ano nga ba ulit ang ibig sabihin ng consolidate? That is, combining. Therefore, the starting point of the computation of the consolidated net income ay ipagko-combine mo yung uh, net income ni parent at net income ni subsidiary. Okay? This is N, ha? Ayan. Bigla ko na letter C habang nagsasalita yan. No? <laughs> okay. So, lalagay natin yan dito. Alright. Add na yan, of course. Okay? Okay, sana kung hanggang dyan lang eh. Kaso, ano yung sinabi natin kanina? Dapat, ma-eliminate natin ang effects ng inter-company transactions. Okay? So, the third component of our formula for consolidated net income ay yung tinatawag nating dividends from subsidiary. Okay? Tingnan nyo, ha? Anong ibig sabihin na itong dividends from subsidiary? Let's assume, subsidiary paid 100,000 dividends to all its shareholders for the year. Di ba ang discussion natin doon sa date of acquisition, si subsidiary pinagatian ni parent at ni NCI. So, ang mga shareholders talaga ni subsidiary ay si parent at NCI yan. So, kung magbabayad yan ng dividendo, kay parent at NCI ang punta. Di ba? Yan. So, ano yung dividends natin kanina? 100,000. And also, let's assume, parent has 70% ownership while non-controlling interest has 30% ownership over subsidiary. Okay. Yung 100,000 dividends na yan ay mahate ganito. Kay parent, 70%. Therefore, 70,000 makupunta kay parent. Tapos kay NCI, 30% lang. So, 30,000. Tama? Yung, i, yung tatanggalin lang natin dito sa consolidated net income natin ay yung kay parent. Parents share only. Tatanggalin natin yung share niya lang. Yes, sir. What about yung share ni NCI? Hindi ba natin tatanggalin? Answer, hindi dito sa consolidated net income. Tatanggalin din natin yan, pero sa ibang computations. Not in consolidated net income. Gets? Yung kay parent lang ang tatanggalin natin. Kasi tinitreat ito ni parent as dividend income. So, pumapasok yan sa net income niya. Tama? Alright. 
That's the first intercompany transaction there. Next, add or minus amortization of purchase differentials. Pwede kasing add yan, pwede minus. Depende sa case. Saan naman ito nang gagaling, sir? Nang gagaling ito doon sa fair value adjustments na ginagawa natin nung kinocompute natin yung result ng business combination. Di ba? Like, undervalued si asset, undervalued si liability, etc. Papasok yan dito. Kasi yung ipang a-adjust mo doon, ia-amortize dito yan. No? Mamaya, sa problem, makikita nyo kung papaano yung proseso. Okay? Next. For the last two components of our formula, depende yan sa resulta ng business combination. Kung ang resulta ng business combination mo ay goodwill, ia-assess kasi natin yan kung impaired or hindi. So in case na ma-assess na impaired si goodwill, papasok dito yung impairment loss. Tawag dito, impairment loss on goodwill. Bawas yan sa consonant income. Tapos, kung ang result naman ng business combination mo ay gain on bargain purchase, ipapasok mo yan dito. Gain on bargain purchase. Pero take note, gagawin mo lang ito in the year of acquisition. Yan. Gagawin mo lang yan in the year of acquisition. Okay? In the subsequent years, hindi mo na i-add ulit si gain on bargain purchase sa consonant income natin. Get? Okay. So, pag once ni-summarize natin lahat ng yan, ang tatawagin natin dito ay consonant income. This consonant income is attributable to the group, parent and NCI combined. Okay? Ayan. Sige. Next. Ayan na. Consonant income attributable to the parent and NCI. Sabay natin kung sa kalitan. So, babalik tayo sa taas. No? Titignan natin kung may share ba yung parent or CNCI. Okay? Net income parent. Kanino yan attributable? Attributable lang yan kay parent. Hindi makikishare si NCI dyan. Kasi in the first place, wala naman siyang ownership over parent company. Tandaan nyo, kay subsidiary lang siya may ownership. Okay? Net income subsidiary, may, may share si parent, may share si NCI. Paano hatian nito, sir? Based on ownership percentage. Okay? So, let's say 70% si parent, edi 70% ng net income ni subsidiary kay parent at 30% kay NCI. Next, dividends from subsidiary, si parent lang katanggalan mo. Kasi, ano sabi natin kanina? Share lang ni parent ang katanggalin natin. Connected kasi ito dito sa net income ni parent. So, kung tatanggalan mo lang ay yung net income ni parent, E eh, si parent lang talaga tatanggalan mo. Wala kang tatanggalin kay NCI's share of consonant income. Okay? Next. Amortization of purchase differential. Since attributable yan sa mga accounts ni subsidiary, si parent ay may share din yan. Pati si NCI. Which is also based on Ownership percentage. Yan. Okay? Next, impairment loss. Ito, mag-ingat kayo dito, guys. No? Kay parent, palaging may share si parent dyan. Pagdating kay NCI, pwedeng meron, pwedeng wala. Dumidepende yan kung paano mo siya minesure initially. 
Minessure mo ba siya at fair value nung date of acquisition or naka-proportionate share basis na siya? Okay? Ito lang tatandaan nyo. Pag na-measure ang NCI at fair value, may share yan sa impairment loss. Pag na-measure mo naman yung NCI at proportionate share basis lang, wala siyang share sa impairment loss. Pakitake note yan. Makikita nyo yung computations later on. Alright? And last one, yung gain on bargain purchase, kay parent lang yan. Wala si non-controlling interest. Okay? Ayan. So, summarize, summarize. For the column of the parent, ang tawag natin dyan, consonant income attributable to the parent. Sa column naman ni NCI, tawag natin dyan, ay NCMIS. Or non-controlling interest in the net income of subsidiary. Ah, klaro? Yes natin? Okay. Puro performa templates muna tayo ah, sa problems. Ma, lalagyan na, na natin ng figures yan. Alright? Okay. That's for consolidated net income. Next, computation of the consolidated retained earnings. Dapat alam nyo rin to. How do we compute for consolidated retained earnings? Start off from consolidated retained earnings beginning. mag add tayo dito ng consonant income attributable to the parent. Ingatan nyo to ah, yung consonant income attributable to the parent lang ang ipapasok natin kay Conso RE. Then, less dividends declared and paid by parent. That is how you compute for your consolidated retained earnings. So in simple terms, attributable lang to kay parent. Okay? So that's our formula for consolidated retained earnings. Next, computation of your NCNAS or non-controlling interest in the net assets of subsidiary. Start off from non-controlling interest beginning balance plus NC miss. Then, less dividends from subsidiary. So, this time, share ni NCI naman yung nandito. Yan ang katanggalin natin dito kay NC NAS naman. So, that is how you compute for your NCNAS. Malinaw? So, kung gagamitin natin yung, yung example natin kanina na 70-30, edi yung 30% lang yung itatanggal natin dito. Yeah? Yung 30% ng 100,000 dividends ni subsidiary. Get? Yan ang computations ng patlong consolidated balances. Alright? Next. WPEs, working paper elimination entries. Tuloy na natin yung listahan ng working paper elimination entries natin. So, di ba doon sa date of acquisition natin, guys? Yung first three WPEs binigay ko na. So, ngayon, ituloy natin. Additional four WPEs tayo. Ito naman, applicable sa subsequent date of acquisition. Okay? Let's start. Number four. Working paper elimination entry number four. This is the elimination of intercompany dividends. Ano wipi neto? Debit, dividend income, Debit, non-controlling interest. Credit, retained earnings ni subsidiary. 
by using our illustration kanina, yung dividend income na tatanggalin natin dito ay yung 70,000 ni pay rent, yung 30,000 ni non-controlling interest, at yung 100,000 ni subsidiary. Okay? So, ini-eliminate natin yung effects ng inter-company transactions. Right? Next. Witty number five, amortization of purchase differentials. So, dalawa case natin dito. No? Case number one, undervalued ang assets. What if undervalued ang assets? Okay. Anong ginawa natin nung date of acquisition? Di ba pag undervalued ang assets, dinadagdagan natin? Tama? Now, pag i-amortize natin yung mga, dag, mga increase na yon, ganito nangyayari. No? Let's say inventory yung undervalued dati. Tapos i-amortize mo na. So, debit, cost of goods sold tayo. Next, let's say may, may undervalued equipment na rin. Tama? So, magde-debit tayo ng depreciation expense. Then, tatanggalin mo yung increase na ginawa mo kay inventory at kay equipment. Nasusundan? O, oh, reviewin natin na. Sir, bakit nagkaganyan? Hindi namin gets. Bakit nagkaganyan ang WIPI number 5? So, ganito. Di ba pag undervalued ang inventory, ano nangyayari sa CGS mo? Undervalued din. That's why, di natagdagan natin yung CGS. Okay? Next. Pag undervalued ang equipment, ano nangyayari sa depreciation mo? Undervalued. That's why, di natagdagan natin yung depreciation expense. Yet, Kaya ganyan ang WIPI number 5. In case the assets are undervalued at date of acquisition. Case 2. Paano kung overvalued naman yung assets? Okay. Pag overvalued yung assets, for example, inventory, ano nangyari sa CGS mo? Overvalued. Kaya binabawasan mo yung cost of goods sold mo. Tama? So, ano nagiging entrada nun? Debit? Inventory. Ire-reverse mo yung ginawa mo decrease sa overvalued inventory mo. Tapos, let's say may equipment din na overvalued, tatanggalin mo rin yung increase na ginawa mo kay equipment. Credit? Cost of goods sold? Credit? Depreciation? Expense? Baliktaran sila. Okay? Mamaya sa problem, makikita nyo kung paano talaga nangyayari yung ganyan. Okay? Next. Number six. Recognition of impairment loss on goodwill. So, debit, impairment loss, credit, goodwill. Mangyayari lang ito kapag ang result ng business combination mo ay goodwill. Alright? And last one, recognition of NCNAS. Yan. Recognition of NCNAS. Okay? So, dito, ang nangyayari dito, guys, ay debit, retained earnings, at ililipat mo kay NCI, yung NCNIS. Okay? Nakuha. NCNIS, nire-classify natin from retained earnings pakunta kay non-controlling interest in the net assets of subsidiary. Okay? So, these are the additional working paper elimination entries applicable sa subsequent to date of acquisition. So far, meron na tayong seven. Diba? Yung, yung first three, nasa date of acquisition. Alright? Ayan. So, naano na natin, nadagdagan na natin. Okay? Sige.
Next slide natin, magpa-problem number one na tayo. Alright, let's go. Problem one. Ayan. Our handout in this topic is one page lang. Pero ang dami tinatanong. Dalawang taon pa nga yan eh. Diba? Sige, sagutan natin. Number one. Goodwill arising from business combination on January 1, 2022. So, babalik tayo sa date of acquisition. Powell Company acquires 80% of the common stock of Scarlet Company for 372,000. At that time, Scarlet Company's shareholders' equity is composed of common stock and retained earnings. Also, binigay din yung shareholders' equity ni Powell Company. Ano pa ang given? Fair value ng NCI. Ayan. Then, yung mga accounts na may fair value differences. Okay? Sige. So, how do we compute goodwill? Ano yung kinocompare natin dito? That is the cost of investment versus fair value identifiable net assets subsidiary. Ano naman ng cost of investment ulit? Consideration transferred, previously held securities, non-controlling interest. Okay? Ayan. Tapos sa fair value identifiable net assets, ano ang usual na ginagawa natin? Nagsisimula tayo sa book value niya. Okay? So starting point na ito ay si Divina. Alright? Sige, let's start. Cost of investment muna tayo. Since wala namang sinabi na may previously held interest itong si Powell Company over Scarlett, wala tayong previously held securities. As to consideration transferred, ia-assign natin dyan yung 80%. Magkano binayad for 80% ownership? 372,000. So kung 80% na kay parent, ilan na lang natitira kay NCI? 20%. How do we value NCI? General rule at fair value. Given ba fair value? Yes. Lalagay ko ba agad? Not yet. Kasi, kailangan nyo pang i-compare yan sa kanyang pre, uh, proportionate share basis. No? So, the fair value is 98,200. Kaso, hindi pa natin alam kung magkano yung proportionate share basis. Paano ba kinocompute ang proportionate share basis? Fair value identifiable net assets, subsidiary, times ownership per interest ni NCI. E kaso, hindi pa natin alam kung magkano ang FB na, tama? So, we need to compute for that first. Alright? Sige. How much is the BV na ni subsidiary? That is, equal to its total shareholders' equity. Kung wala yung total shareholders' equity, e di total assets less total liabilities ni Scarlett, e since given naman pala yung shareholders' equity niya, paki-add lang. 240 plus 120, that is 360. Then, may listahan tayong accounts na may fair value differences. Lagay din natin. Inventory, land, equipment, and building. Alright. Ano case ni land? Carry in value 24. Fair value 30. Sino masusunod? Of course, the fair value. Eh, since mas mataas yung fair value, anong ibig sabihin neto? Undervalued si inventory. Therefore, mag add tayo ng magkano? 6,000. Next, land, carrying value is 48,000, fair value is 55,200. O ganun din, mas mataas fair value. So, undervalued si land. Mag-a-add tayo ng 7,200. Equipment, carrying value 84K, fair value 180,000. Ganun din, mas mataas fair value niya, tama? Tama. So, undervalued yung equipment. Magkano dadagdag natin? 96,000. Next, 
Last one, building. Carrying value is 168,000. Fair value, 144. Oh, mas mababa fair value ngayon. So, pag ganito ang case, anong ibig sabihin? Overvalued si building. So, magkano ibabawas natin? That would be 24,000. Di ba? Mabilis na tayo because na-discuss na to nung date of acquisition. Sige nga, pakicompute. How much is our fair value identifiable net assets? 445,200. Okay. Dahil may FB na na tayo, pwede na natin makompute yung proportionate share basis ni NCI. So, 445,200 times 20%. How much is that? That would be 89,040 pesos. Take whichever is higher. So, sino mas mataas? Of course, the fair value. So, finalize na natin siya at 98,200. Alright. Magkano ang total cost of investment? That is 470,200. Oh, what would be the result? Since mas mataas yung cost of investment, Meron tayong goodwill. Amounting to, is that 25,000? Ayan. So, goodwill is 25,000. So, our answer for number one is 25,000. Oh, diba? So, one out of 15 questions, done. Lahat ang diniscuss natin sa date of acquisition na sa isang item lang. Di ba? Galing eh, no? Pagod na kayo. Grabe, wala pa nga tayo sa kalahate eh. In fact, di pa tayo nakakaabot ng subsequent to date of acquisition. Date of acquisition pa lang to. Okay? So, ano natin? Tunay lang natin. Okay? Ready na? Sige. Number two. How much of the goodwill is attributable to the parent and non-controlling interest respectively. Okay, so how do we compute for now item number two? So, parent and CI. Iko-compare natin dyan ay yung initial measurement at yung kanilang proportionate share basis. As to initial measurement, madali lang yan guys. No? Yung initial measurement kasi makikita nyo agad dito. The initial measurement, lagay na lang natin ang ibang kulay. For the pay rent, 372,000. For the NCI, 98,200. Yan agad yung initial measurement. So, pasok natin dito. 98,200. Then, as to proportionate share basis, mumultiply mo nyo lang yung fair value identifiable net assets by their respective ownership interest. Eh, magkano ba yung fair value identifiable net assets natin kanina? Di ba yan yung 445,200? Para kay parent, 80% yan. At para kay NCI, 20% yan. Sige nga, magkano yun? That would be 356,160 kay NCI 89 89,040 pesos. Yan. Tanggalin nyo lang magkano yung share ng goodwill ni parent. 15,840 kay NCI 9,160 Check natin kung equal pa rin ba siya sa total goodwill na 25,000. Tama ba? Yes. 
ganyan hinate yung 25,000 goodwill sa number 1. So, the final answer for number 2, para kay Payren, 15,840. Para kay NCI, 9,160. Diba? Yan ang number 2 natin. Okay? O, natandaan? Sige. So, okay na tayo for number 2. Number 3. Isasabay na natin sa number 4. Total, kaya naman siya sagutan ng sabay na eh. Tama? Okay. How much is the consolidated net income for the year 2022? How much of the 2022 consolidated net income is attributable to the parent and non-controlling interest respectively? So, let's start. I'll, since binigay naman natin yung formula kanina, masusundan natin to. Okay? And the starting point? Net income, parent, net income, subsidiary. Group muna, of course. No? Group muna. Okay. Magkano net income ni parent? Ano to, ah? Year 2022. Huwag nyo muna tignan yung year 2023. 2022 lang tayo. So, si parent merong 196,800. Tapos, si subsidiary merong 60,000. Okay, lagay natin siya dyan. Oh, next. Ano yung third? That's the dividend from subsidiary. Kaninong share? Parent lang. Okay. Magkano yung dividends na binayad ni Scarlett during 2022? 36,000. 36,000 times ilang porsyento meron si parent? 80% ba yon? Okay. So, multiply mo lang ng 80% yan. So, how much is that? 28,800. Tatanggalin natin yan. Kasi, itong 28,800 guys, included yan sa net income ni parent na 196,800. Okay? Nasa loob niya yan. Kasi, yung mga dividends na natatanggap niya sa kanyang subsidiary, nakatreat yan as dividend income. Kaya, included siya in the first place. As since it is an intercompany transaction, we must eliminate its effect. Clear? Okay. Next. What's the fourth? Amortization of purchase differential. Okay, sir. Paano na natin yung kukumpitin? Babalik tayo sa number one. Ay, ganun, sir. Oo, babalik tayo dito. O, oh, saan natin kukunin yung ating purchase differentials? Ito yun. These are the purchase differentials. Ah, yun pala yun. Yes, sila yan. Okay? So, titignan nyo, no? Inventory, land, equipment, and building. Dapat alam natin kung kailan siya nakaka-apekto sa net income ni subsidiary. Since lahat ng accounts na ito, related kay subsidiary. Okay? Sige, sir. Paano natin yan i-analyze? Okay. Lagyan muna natin ito ng year 2022. Inventory. Matanong ko lang, kailan siya nakaka-apekto ng net income? Ay, sir, pag nabenta sa si inventory. Very good. Kasi pag nabenta sa si inventory, nagiging cost of sales. Tama? Eh, kaso ang problema, undervalued yung inventory. Di ba? Undervalued yung inventory natin. Ano nangyari sa cost of goods sold mo? Undervalued. Anong epekto ng undervalued cost of goods sold sa net income? Overvalued, sir. Very good. So, mataas masyado yung net income ni San Sijari because of the undervaluation of the inventory. So, anong gagawin natin para ma-eliminate yung error na yon? Well, actually, it's not an error, no? Pero, for consolidation purposes, nagiging error siya. Ano gagawin natin doon? Sir, ima-minus. 
very good. Ima-minus natin. Okay? Now, bago tayo mag-minus, tignan nyo nga kung nabenta na lahat ng inventaryo na to. Answer? Nabenta naman daw. Nandun siya sa ano eh, third paragraph. Ayan no? Second sentence. The inventories on January 1, 2022 were all sold during 2022. Since lahat naman pala yung nabenta to, edi yung 6,000 mo, 100% na ma-amortize. Okay? Lahat ng 6,000 ma-amortize. Okay? Wait nga, palitan natin yung kulay para hindi masyado nakakalito. Take to tie dito para mas maintindihan nyo. Ayan. So, 2022. Yung buong 6,000 mo amortize kasi lahat ay nabenta naman pala. Okay? Eh sir, paano kung hindi lahat na benta? Let's say 60%. Eh di, ang i-amortize mo lang ay 60% ng 6,000 pagka ganun. Nakuha? Instead na buong 6,000 i-amortize mo, 60% lang i-amortize mo. Pagka 60% lang ang nabenta. Ha? Okay? Next. Land. Kailan nakaka-apekto ng net income si land? Nagde-depreciate ba ang land? Hindi. Tama? Kaya nalang nakaka-apekto ng net income kapag ito ay nabenta usually. O, oh, nabenta na ba yung land? Nabenta ba yung land? Answer? Walang sinabi, sir, sa third paragraph. Okay. Walang sinabi. Pero, we assume that it is not yet sold. Okay? Pag walang sinabi kung ano ang status ng land, then we assume that it is being used in operations. That's why wala kang i-amortize sa kanya. Okay? Wala kang i-amortize kay land. Oh, next. Equipment. Undervalued yung equipment. Tama? Ano nangyayari pag undervalued yung equipment? Undervalued yung depreciation. Ano effect nun sa net income? Overvalued ang net income. So, similar to inventory, babawasan din natin yung sa equipment. Di ba? Okay, sir. Bawasan natin 96,000. Hindi buong 96,000. Kailan ba nakaka-apekto ng net income yung equipment? Pag nag-depreciate. Eh, every year nag-depreciate. Tama? So, how do we amortize the purchase differential related to equipment? Amortize it over its remaining useful life. So, according to the third paragraph, the equipment had a remaining life of 8 years. So, yung 96,000, ikakalat mo pa over 8 years. Okay? Ganyan ang gagawin nyo sa mga depreciable assets. Ikakalat over the remaining life. So, magkano yun? 96,000 divided by 8 years, that will be 12 12,000. Okay? 12,000. Kasi nakaka-apekto siya ng net income pag nag-depreciate. No? So, ganun sir, palagi, kapag sa mga depreciable assets, yes, unless na lang kung binenta siya. Kasi pag nabenta yan, there will be acceleration of amortization. Nakuha ba? So, kung next year, nabenta na pala yung equipment, edi eh yung natitirang fair value adjustment, completely amortized na siya. No? Magkano yun, sir? That is 96 minus 12. Yun yung i-amortize mo next year kung ganun ang mangyayari. Kung hindi, edi eh i-amortize mo every year over its remaining useful life. Clear? Okay. Last one, building. Si building overvalued, tama? So, pag overvalued si building, ano nangyayari sa depreciation? Overvalued. Ano yung effect ng overvalued depreciation sa net income? Mababa. Understated. So, anong ginagawa para tumama ulit si net income? Mag-aad tayo. Okay? So, just like equipment, i-amortize din siya ng remaining useful life, which is 4 years. 
So, 24,000 divided by 4, how much is that? 6,000. Yeah, add nyo. Yet, that's how you do the amortization of purchase differential. Dapat alam nyo kung ano ang epekto niya sa net income. Okay? Now, kung medyo nahihirapan kayo sa pag-a-analyze ng ganong method, yan ito lang isipin nyo. Tingnan nyo ha. Diba, diba in-add natin siya ng date of acquisition? Pag i-amortize mo, pabaliktaran niya. That's why nagmamino siya. Okay? Ingat lang kayo sa land. Yung land kasi, kailan nakaka-apekto ng net income? Pag nabenta. Correct? Equipment. O, oh. tinaasan mo siya noon. Kaso, binababaan mo siya every year. Sa building naman, since naka-negative siya noon, naka-add siya ngayon. Baliktaran. Na? Ganun lang isipin niyo, guys. Alright? Mag-ingat lang doon sa non-depreciable asset natin. Okay. So, what will be the amortization of purchase differential for the year 2022? That would be 12,000 negative. That's for 2022. No? So, balik na tayo sa number 3. Nakuha na natin siya. Ayan. So, that will be 12,000 negative. Puan nyo, guys. Buhay pa. Daming ginagawa, no? Okay. Tuloy natin. Next. Yung last two components depende sa resulta ng business com. Ano pa result ng business com kanina? Goodwill. Therefore, hindi mag apply yung gain dito. Wala nang mag apply na gain. No? Exclusive lang kasi sila yan. So, kung may goodwill, walang gain. Kung may gain, walang goodwill. Gets? So, kung goodwill pala result ng business combination, tignan natin kung may information ba related to its impairment. Let's see. Goodwill, if any, is impaired by 5,000. Oh, meron palang impairment loss. Therefore, pasok natin. Impairment loss on goodwill. Minus 5,000. Alright? Ayan. So, walang gain. Okay. Pwede nyo na makompute yung number 3 dito. How much is the consolidated net income? Consolidated net income is how much? 211,000. Ayun. So, yan ang sagot sa number 3. Okay? O, next. Number 4 tayo. Sagutan natin ito ng sabay. Parent. NNCI. Net income parent, kay parent lang yan. O, net income subsidiary, kay parent and NCI. Para kay parent, 80% bigay mo. Tapos para kay NCI, 20%. So, magkano 80%? Is that 48,000? Add natin. Tapos kay NCI, 12,000. Dividends from subsidiary, since kay parent lang to, kay parent lang siya. Amortization of purchase differential, both parent and NCI will share based on ownership interest. Magkano to? That is 9,600 minus N24. Alright. Oh, last one, goodwill impairment. 5,000. Ay, sir, alam na namin yan. 80% kay parent, 20% kay, kay non-control interest. Mali. Ang impairment ng goodwill, hindi nakabase sa kanilang ownership interest. Mag-ingat kayo dyan. Yan, ang al yan, yan nasa last na nga lang tayo eh. Di ba? Tapos magkakamali pa. Sayang ang mga pinaghirapan natin kanina pa. Okay? Sige, sir. Paano natin hatiin yan? Babalik tayo sa number 2. 
O sa ano meron dito? Di ba kinuha natin yung paghati ng goodwill kay parent at si ay kanina? Pwes, yung ratio nila, yan ang gagamitin natin panghati ng impairment loss on goodwill. So, kunin mo nga yung ratio kay parent, 15,840 divided by 25,000. Magkano yun? Ano sir? 63... 0.36%. Okay. Eh, kay NCI, 36.64%. Yan ang percentage na gagamitin nyo to allocate the impairment loss on goodwill. So, kay pay rent, ibibigay mo 63.36%. So, magkano yon? Magkano mapupunta kay pay rent? That is, 3... 3,168. Tapos kay, kay non-controlling interest, 1,832. Always remember that. Ganyan ang nangyayari pag goodwill impairment. Alright? Gain, wala naman yan. Oh, answer number four. Magkano ang consonant income attributable to the parent? 203,232. Non-controlling interest, 7,768. Yan ang sagot natin kay number 4. Make sure lang na pag pinag-add nyo yung consonant income ni parent at consonant income ni non-controlling interest, equal yan kay 211,000. Ako ba'y nasusundan? Okay? Sige. So, okay na tayo, ha? Next, number five. What amount of retained earnings shall be presented on the consolidated statement of financial position December 31, 2022? Oh, konsore ang tinatanong sa atin. Konso RE. So, hanapin lang natin yung beginning niya. Plus, Consonant income attributable to the parent, which is year 2022, less dividends declared and paid by parent in 2022. So that will be the consolidated rating earnings December 31, 2022. Okay, as to the beginning, paano natin nahanapin yung beginning ng consore? Since this is the year of acquisition, guys, the beginning balance of your consolidated retained earnings is simply the retained earnings of the parent no date of acquisition. So, saan makikita yun? Nandun siya sa first paragraph. Magkano? 360,000. Yan agad yun. Kasi di ba, ini-eliminate natin yung shareholders' equity ni subsidiary at date of acquisition. That's why ang nakikira ay yung kay parent na lang. Okay? Next. Consonant income parent, magkano yung nakuha natin kanina? 203,232. And lastly, dividends declared and paid by parent. Meron ba siyang binayan na dividends for 2022? Yes. 72,000. Yan. So, magkano konso RE natin? Final answer for number 5, 491,232. Yan. So, final answer for number 5 is 491,232. Number six, what amount of non-controlling interest shall be presented on the separate statement of financial position and consolidated statement of financial position December 31, 2022? As to number one, wala tayong pinipresent sa separate SFP natin, guys. So, ang sagot sa number one yan, zero na agad. No? Yung NCI kasi, pinipresent lang yan sa consolidated FS. Paano ba kinokompit si NCI? 
So, NCI beginning plus 2022 20, NC na less dividends from subsidiary. So, dito natin makukuha si NCNAS or NCI. Twenty twenty two. Okay. NCI beginning. Magkano initial measurement natin sa kanya kanina? 98,200. Ayun. Plus yung... Ay, ba't NCNAS to? NCNIS pala dapat. Ayan, sorry. NCNIS talaga dapat to. Ayan. Magkano NCNIS natin kanina? 7,768. Less dividends from subsidiary. Kunin mo lang yung 20% ng dividends na binayad ni subsidiary. That is 36,000 times 20%. 7,200. Tama ba ako? Ayun. So, magkano NCNAS natin? 98,768. So, sagot natin for number 6. For number 1, 0. Number 2, sagot natin dyan, 98,768. Walang NCI sa separate FS ni Payeren. Gets nyo ba? Walang NCI doon. Alright? Are we all clear? So ngayon, natapos na natin yung year 2022. Okay, number 6. Alright? And uh, dito pa lang, na-discuss na natin yung buong concept ng consolidation. Nakuha nyo? Di ba? So pagdating sa number 7, mabilis na tayo. Okay? Ayan. Oh, numbers 7 and 8. How much is the consolidated net income for year 2023? Tapos, sa number 8, ganun ulit. Consolidated net income attributable to parent and NCI. Alrighty na? Okay. So, starting point natin. Net income parent. Net income subsidiary. Tapos, dividends from Subsidiary, tama ba ako? Amortization of purchase differential. Goodwill impairment kung meron. Okay? Ayan. Magkano net income ni parent 2023 naman? 234? 200. Net income subsidiary? 60,000. Dividends from subsidiary, magkano yung binayad na dividends ni Scarlett 2023? 48,000 times 80%. How much is that? 38,400. Amortization of purchase differential. Okay. So, babalik tayo sa number 1. Okay. 2023 naman. O, tignan nyo to ah. Since yung inventory fully amortized na ng 2022, wala ka nang i-amortize ia for 2023. Sa land, since naka-silent ulit, so we assume ginagamit sa operations, wala pa rin amortization. For equipment, since ginagamit naman pala siya until 2023, annual amortization tayo. Minus 12,000. Ganon din sa building. So, add 6,000. So, your amortization of purchase differential for year 2023 is negative 6,000. Goods ba tayo, guys? Okay. So, balik tayo dito. Magkano yung amortization of purchase differential? That is, Negative 6,000. Very good. 
lagay natin. Yan. Next. Last one. May goodwill impairment ba tayo? Answer natin. Wala nang sinabi, no? Ay, hindi. Meron. No goodwill impairment. Ayun. Buti naman. So, zero. Alright. O. Oh, sagutin na natin si number 7. How much is the consolidated net income? Consolidated net income is, ayan. Sagot natin, 249,800. So, this is number 7. Number 8, how much of the 2023 consolidated net income is attributable to the parent and NCI? Okay, alam na natin to. Net income parent, si parent lang yan. Net income ni subsidiary, paghahatian nila based on their ownership interest. So, 48,000 kay parent, 12,000 kay NCI. Yung dividends, kay parent lang tatanggalin. Amortization of purchase differential, pay rent, 4,800, NCI, 1,2. Ganon din, 80,20. Then, wala na. Tama, wala na. Magkano ang share ni pay rent sa consonant income? 239,000. NCI, 10,800. Number 8. Next. Number 9. What amount of retail earnings shall be presented in the consolidated statement of financial position? Oh. Paano natin ulit ko compute niyan? Okay? Consore, no? So, CONSO RE, beginning, which is January 1, 2023. Plus, CONSO net income pay rent, 2023, less dividends declared and paid ni pay rent, 'Yan. Okay. As to the beginning consolidated retained earnings, guys. Since this is already a subsequent period, yung beginning balance niya ay equal sa ending balance ng Conso RE last year. So kung ano yung sagot natin sa number, ano nga ulit number noon? Number 5, yun na beginning mo. So that is 491232. Cumulative siya. Okay? Cumulative siya. Then, add consonant income attributable to the parent, 239,000 less dividends paid ni parent, which is 72,000. How much is your consolidated retained earnings for December 31, 2023? Sagot natin, 658,000 232. That's for number 9. Number 10. NCI. Okay. So, NCI January 1, 2023 plus NCNIS. Ha? NCNIS, not NCNAS. NCNAS, NCI yan eh. 2023. Less dividends from subsidiary. 2023 then. So, magkano ang magiging NCI December 31, 2023 natin. Alright. O, oh, beginning balance ng NCI mo since subsequent period na. Kung magkano yung ending balance niya last year, 
yun beginning balance mo. 98,768 plus your NCNIS for today for this period 108 less dividends from subsidiary. Oh, magkano ba yung dividends na binayan ni subsidiary 2023? 48,000 times 20%. Is that 9.6? All right. So, magkano NCI natin, December 31, 2023? That would be 99,968. That's your answer for number 10. Are we all clear? Oh, di ba? Natapos na natin hanggang number 10. Oh, independent assumption. NCI is to be measured at its proportionate share basis. Okay. Ito, mabilis lang tayo dito. Kasi, i-highlight ko na lang kung ano ang kaibahan niya sa curve value method. Oh, number 11. Tinatanong sa atin, goodwill arising from business combination. Okay. Ganito solution niya. The same sa ginawa natin kanina. Except that, this one. Magkano yung ia-assign natin as NCI ng January 1, 2022? So, dahil magpo-proportionate share basis na, so simply, kunin mo lang yung PSB niya. Ignore mo na yung fair value na given sa problem. So, magiging 445-200 times 20%. So, that would be 89,040 89, pesos. Tama ba ako? 89,040 pesos. Okay? So, lagay natin siya dito. 89,040 pesos. Okay? Then, bakit ba meron ito? Tanggalin nga natin to. Ayan. 372,000 plus 89.40, magkana yan? That would be 461.40. Yan. Hindi ko pala natanggal to, no? Yan. 461.40 dapat yan. Then, i-compare mo siya sa FB na. Walang magbabago sa FB na kasi wala naman tayong binagong information sa problem except that naging proportionate share basis lang siya. Correct? So, since mas mataas pa rin yung cost of investment mo, then may goodwill pa rin tayo amounting to 15,840. So, sagot natin sa number 11 is 15,840. Yes? So, number 11, sagot natin 15,840. Next, number 12. How much of the goodwill is attributable to the parent and non-controlling interest? So, ganito na yung allocation. Ayan. Kita nyo, nung naging initial measurement ni NCI 8940, wala siyang share sa goodwill. So, ang sagot natin, 15,840 for the parent and zero sa NCI. Are we all clear? Okay, yan ang sagot natin. 15,840 for the parent, 0 kay NCI. Number 13. How much of the consolidated net income is attributable to the parent and NCI respectively? Ganyan na yung mangyayari. No? O, tignan nyo ha, yung sa impairment loss on goodwill. So dahil walang share sa goodwill si NCI, wala siyang naging share sa impairment loss. Yung buong 5,000 binigay kay parent. Yan ang significant difference between fair value method and your proportionate share basis. Okay? So, ang sagot natin, ito na. For number 13. 201,400 for the parent, 9,600 for the NCI. Okay? 
Next, number 14. Consolidated retained earnings. The same formula. Sagot natin for number 14. 489,400. And lastly, number 15. And si tinatanong, the same formula tayo. Sagot natin for number 15. 99, uh, 99, 91,440. Okay, buhay pa bang lahat? Nasundan ba ang subsequent date of acquisition natin? Ayan. So, yun yung ano natin. Full-blown subsequent to date of acquisition. Okay? And for the last part of our discussion, as promised, Ibibigay ko sa inyo yung computations or formulas for the other consolidated balances. Okay? Let's start with consolidated inventory. Paano pa kinocompute ang consolidated inventory? Okay. So, inventory ni parent, as of December 31 na, yan yun. Inventory ni subsidiary, same date. Yan. A-add nyo yan. Next, nagkakaroon tayo ng fair value adjustments. So, pwedeng add or minus yan. Fair value adjustments at date of acquisition. So, add or minus. Tapos, ano nangyayari sa fair value adjustments? Na-amortize yan. So, pwede rin add or minus cumulative amortization of purchase differential. Pero mag-ingat lang sa, ano, ha, sa amortization of purchase differential. Dapat related kay inventory. No? Kay inventory lang. And that will be your consolidated inventory. As of December 31. Alright? Next. Consolidated PPE. Halos pariho lang naman sila ni inventory except that papalitan mo lang yung pangalan. Tingnan nyo ha. So, PPE ni parent. PPE ni subsidiary. Add or minus fair value adjustments at date of acquisition. Understood na yan. Add or minus cumulative amortization of purchase differential. Then yan ang magiging consolidated PPE natin. December 31. Okay? Next. So, ito yung formula. Next. Consolidated total assets. Ay, ito. Mag-ingat kayo. Ang dami na ito. So, total assets. Pay rent. December 31. Total assets. Subsidiary. December 31. Next, wag na wag niyong kakalimutan yung goodwill as a result of business combination. Pero dapat nakaneto na yan ng impairment, ha? Dapat neto na agad ng impairment yan. Next, add or minus fair value adjustments at date of acquisition. Add or minus Cumulative amortization of purchase differentials. Alright? Next, eliminate the investment in subsidiary account. Ito yung madalas na nakakalimutan. Yung pag-eliminate sa investment in subsidiary account. Kasi intercompany account yan eh. And minus inter-company 
asset accounts. Tatanggalin nyo rin yan. Okay? Then here you go. You have your consolidated total assets. December 31. Okay? Nakuha. Sa an example ng intercompany asset accounts? For example, nagpa-utang si parent kay subsidiary. So, nagkakaroon ng receivable si parent, nagkakaroon ng payable si subsidiary. Yung receivable from subsidiary, that is already the intercompany asset account. Tatanggalin mo yun. Gets? Okay. Sa consolidated total liabilities naman, somewhat similar siya sa asset. Okay? Magiging total liabilities ni parent. Total liabilities ni subsidiary. Add, add. Next, add or minus fair value adjustments kung meron ng date of acquisition. Add or minus cumulative amortization of purchase differential. So that's add or minus. Okay, ano pa? Last one. Eliminate intercompany liability accounts. Yan. Then here you go, you have your consolidated total liabilities. Okay, last two, consolidated total contributed capital and consolidated total shareholders equity account. For the total contributed capital, palaging tatandaan nyo, nandiyan lang yung mga share capital, share premium, subscribe share capital. And kapag consolidated yan, yung kay parent lang. So, ordinary share capital ni parent. Kung may preference share capital siya, kasali yan. Share premium, pay rent, kasali rin yan. Subscribe, share capital, pay rent. Yan ang magiging composition ng consolidated total contributed capital. Gets? Then, for the total shareholders' equity, from here, tuloy natin siya. Consolidated total contributed capital plus consore, consolidated retained earnings plus NCNAS. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Consolidated Total Shareholders Equity. Oh, kapagod yun. Grabe, no, guys? Ang haba. <laughs> Pero kaya yan. Para sa pangarap nating three letters, CPA. CPA. Nawalan pa ng boses. <laughs> Alright. So, here you go, guys. Nandito na yung mga formulas natin. Okay? Ayan. For your reference. Ayun, sa wakas, nasa dulo din tayo. So, this is the end of our topic on subsequent to date of acquisition. Thank you for listening, guys. Sana ay hindi kayo napagod. <laughs> okay, so I hope you've appreciated our lesson for today. So, see you in our next lecture video.